And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Unyielding Arena. You may remember this deck from last Monday, from last meme tier Monday. And this deck did really well. So basically this was just um, a deck that, it was a deck idea that a viewer submitted of build a deck around Unyielding Spirit and it knocks Cry Arena. And so we ended up here with this list and it, it ended up looking really nice. The Nox Cry Arena didn't do that much for us, but just Unyielding Spirit with um, mostly all Demacia cards and Bannermen was just really powerful. An Unyielding Spirit on either of our champions, Fiora, Garen, both great options. And so we're gonna try this again. We're gonna try it over in Master's Rank though this time to give it a lot more difficult test than what we did before. So let's go ahead and, and play our games. We're going to head on over there and uh, let's see how we do. We'll play our five games like always. All right, playing against some scouts. So we're going to be challenging back and forth. So we have the two fewer. I mean, we have good stuff here. Let's try keeping all this. I'm not playing the Bright Steel Protector right away, of course. But I like that we have the attack token on turn three. Jealous. I'll write my own story. Alright, Sharp Sight's good. That's good with the Fiora. They would fall by my so they could definitely have repost as well. So I feel like, kind of feel like if they pass, I should pass also, because repost would be devastating. Now the problem here is if they have misfortune and repost. If only Fiora could see me now. She can. She's not impressed. Because hmm. Misfortune obviously gets rid of barriers, so Misfortune isn't good for me. Um, so the two attacks, they'll still kill Fiora. Misfortune is just a great card. Because even Misfortune's champion spell being like Make It Rain is, a, is an amazing champion spell. so bad. Thank you so much for the tier 1 sub. First sub of the day. Thank you so much. Let's get uh, get those hype boats in the channel. There we go. 1 and 0. Oh. Or 1. <laughs> Sorry. Moving that to 1. So if they were sitting on repost like it looked like that's still going to be a big problem here. I long for a worthy opponent. Yeah. Yeah. That, that repose is still going to be a big problem. My shield is yours. I can move. Aha. Oh God. Well, that's bad too. Now, Misfortune levels up. Because basically, how do I not die? Their pride will cost them. So yeah, I can Unyielding Spirit the Fiora. Which I guess I have to, but that's still... Isn't that me just dying? No, because I guess I block Scythria with the 3-2. So this puts us down to 8. And yeah, this levels up to be 8. Yeah, so that's, that's us de dead. So I guess I have to go Repost. And then, what, Legion Drummer? That's still, 
No, that's still me dead. I can't stop this misfortune from doing 8 damage to me no matter what I do, because of the overwhelm. Alright, so they had they had the things that we need that they needed. They were able to keep that misfortune alive multiple times and then also have you know multiple scouts. GG's. So Jackie said it's a two deck format or aggro in control. It's a two deck format aggro in control. Well, aggro is not a deck. Control is not a deck. Those aren't two different decks. Those are those are archetypes. Like broad, very broad archetypes in the the broadest sense possible. A two deck format would mean you could play. Two, you know, like literally two decks. That is not what we have here. It's a lot of damage coming in. Break their spirits and their swords. We'll see if I regret not playing the Bright Steel Protector, but not playing the Bright Steel Protector allows me to keep single combat available. In place, beauty in the blade. Like maybe I need to be playing Legion Drum or Bright Steel Protector here instead of Blade Keeper now so I get more bodies out here. There's a lot of burn. This is pretty scary. Oh, and I do not have Radiant Guardian in this deck, do I? Uh-oh. Even though they won't do very much damage Damn it. much at all anymore, on the board. They say these were from the protector himself. Yeah, I guess I should have played drummer and protector last turn instead of blade keeper. No prey, no pay. For justice, for Demacia. Let's get through. I beat you. Hold fast. So I'm going down to seven. I was hoping that they would play something first and then I'd get to single combat. That's what I was really hoping was going to happen. But obviously it didn't happen. Because um, basically I was really worried about going single combat and they go Noxion Fervor. And so I'm basically just really worried about Noxion Fervor at this point. No, they, looks like they got this. I'll be very surprised if we end up winning. But you never know. We'll play it out. We march as one, an unstoppable force. They're gonna have to have Nexus damage because they're not, not gonna do any more damage with units. Who's on top of the bounty board today? We stand oh, come strong. on, we missed? There's not very many Noxus cards in our deck, and we have two of them in our hand, and we just drew one. To victory. George. What that means is that means the Legion Drummer dies, and of course I'm dealing less damage. This is not the we'd way. have the attack token at the beginning of the next turn as well. Definitely hurts, because otherwise they would be at they would be at 11 right now, and I would still have my Legion drummer alive, or they probably would have blocked something else. So maybe they just only have units, or units plus like one Noxion fervor. We can stop one Noxion fervor. It's possible, I suppose. Gypsy, where they come from? 
best hope they'll do, mate. You're covered. Could still do this. Oh no, that thing has vulnerable. Oh no. I forgot. The hired gun gave that thing vulnerable. So I ha I'm priced into single combating. So I have to do this now so I can have this challenge the gangplank if they don't attack. So obviously with like I'm trying to play around Noxion Fervor the best I can. I don't I have no idea what, what y'all are saying. Now I guess it's better just to block that thing than do nothing. Okay, you want me to, to buff the 3-3 in case they attack? Once they, once they, see, once I did that and then they passed, I kind of felt like they were going to pass again, so I felt like I was, I was able to do this. But yeah, I could have buffed the 3-3 to make it a 5-5 to be able to block. I guess that, that was safer in that respect. Uncle, it is good to see you. I keep step with the heartbeat of Noxus. <sighs> okay. Break their ranks! Remember why we fight! A cut above the rest. Aha! Go to one. You spurred my gift. Say your farewells. I didn't try. Didn't try fervor at all. If they have fervor. They didn't try it. Do we get to attack? They had fervor. Looks like. Wow. We actually won that. That was unexpected. Jump. Jump. There you go. All right. Penning Harvey with my left hand. Puppy just jumped up here. The dogs are, are all good. All right, we'll just keep this. This looks like what we want to play on turn one, two, three, and four. Doesn't get too much better than that. Looks like we're playing against maybe some ephemerals or some fearsome or some spooky stuff. Yep, this is a Demacia curve here. First game with the Mossy Curve. I think this is our first time playing Elite Feather Tracker Turn 1. I pull the strings. You won't suffer long. For the Empire! Alright, so <laughs> one, two, three, four, eight, eight. <laughs> it's like, wait, eight, eight? That's not how that's supposed to go. All right, there we go. There's a five. Blade. Stay away from my pets. Stay away. No. A tribute to the spider god. Let them eat souls. Oh god. I don't want to challenge the Elise, and then they play another. Uh, Vile Feast and kill my Fiora. I think what my plan here is to do nothing this turn, I think. See, obviously we could, we could Bannerman. Lars, I'm just taking eight if I do nothing. And then next turn I can Unyielding Spirit. I don't know, maybe I should Bannerman. Bannerman, like, blocks these two. 
So wait, I could go Bannerman now. Next turn's turn five, I play Protégé, and then turn six, I can Spirit. So yeah, I guess we Bannerman. Raise the banner. Lift our spirits. They grow up so fast. Do not waver. Yeah, that's true. They could definitely have Deny. That could be what their Splashing Ionia most likely is. What they're Splashing Ionia for. If only Fiora could see me now. She can. She's not impressed. Sorry, Protégé. Not impressed. You think they're playing the Go Get It KDA card? Possible. Gonna pass. All right. Well, I'm gonna try unyielding spirit. We shall We're gonna try it. No. Grasp the undying. All right, well that went really bad. Close my eyes, make it fair. Well, that went really bad. Break their spirits and their swords. I would say it could have gone worse, but I'm not sure it could have. Why did I just do that to this one? Should have just done to this one. You call this a fight? Hardly fair. Yeah, should have just done to the other one. Run them through. Aha. Basically, this this protege is gonna have one health left. I could have had it had the protege have two health left. I didn't. Um, I didn't like recalibrate. You know, like that was like my plan before and challenge the two three. But then once they played this and or the three two, and then once they changed played this and made it a 4-2, I should have changed and put it on the other one. So at least they missed. Skitter out from the darkness. Oh wait, I'm dead. I was planning on going on Yielding Spear here, but I'm just dead. Need to play the two drop. Cool. Definitely like Tom Kench Lux. That deck's awesome. Um. Yeah, we're we're gonna be behind here. We're definitely gonna be behind. Um, this deck is great against. Kind of great against what we're trying to do. Like, it's great against Unyielding Spirit with having Detain and uh, Tom Kench being able to eat. They got some good stuff. Um, I'll be a little surprised if we win this, to be honest. We march as one, an unstoppable force. Like, I could pass and see if they, you know, like, remembrance, try to remember in Sharp Sight here, but... Will you comply? Okay, it's just not... Not necessarily going to work. Yeah, I got, I got way too greedy with the Unyielding Spirits last, last game, for sure. With playing the Unyielding Spirit on turn 6, I didn't have to do that. I could have been much more patient. I didn't play that game very well. So while I could use single combat, I think I'd, I'd rather get a sharp side out of my hand and save single combat.
Alright, so I'm planning on playing Garen. And then trying to kill this and getting another Garen in play. Stay safe, milady. Mages are everywhere. Oh, uh, don't you worry about me. So you can get two Garens. So this went pretty well for us. They didn't have Remembrance or anything. Um, yeah, this, this game went pretty well for us, so... Feel pretty good about winning this from here. They don't have Judgment Mana. Don't really know what punishes me from just an all-out attack. Alright, GG's. Two and two. Good, real good hand for us. Not as great for them. I don't think that deck's a combo deck. Just because it has... It has like a, a single... Be like a, a landmark win con that they can win the game on its own doesn't mean that it's a, a combo deck it just has like that's you know that's like plan a win condition is that landmark it's not a, it's not a combo no challengers a bunch of ways to help out challengers let's mulligan these two Uh, definitely want un okay cool we got unyielding spirit now we definitely want Fiora we want Fiora unyielding spirit for this matchup I may not play this Legion drummer really need to draw Fiora next turn and I want to have multiple mana for Fiora next turn all right let's play it remember why we fight. That's great. So basically a combo deck is looking for a specific combo each game, which I don't know, like, yeah, you want star shaping, but I don't know if there's like a specific combo with star shaping that you need to put together each game. Um, and you don't have to have, you know, like you're also like a Tom Kench control deck. I just don't, I don't think that that, I don't think that would classify as a combo deck. Like a combo deck, you know, like your exact like two, three card combo that you're, you're trying to always get that wins the game for you. The world awaits! Forward! These things are vulnerable. I'm not going to protect them with Sharp Sight. Could really use Fiora this game. Because that's that's our most likely way of winning is just killing four things with Fiora. That's that would be a lot easier way to win than anything else. So still just looking for Fiora. Uh, may need to just unyielding spear of the screeching dragon, but I, that only gets us so far. Garen unyielding spirit. Guess I can attack. On both both turns. The wicked must fall. He guaranteed to do some striking. Alright. 
Still have the mana for Crumble. I hope they don't have that card. Dang. A lot of those. Seven. Maybe just don't even need. Just don't even need unyielding spirit. Like the Garen has regeneration. Are they really killing the, the Garen anyway? Like maybe not. We'll see. Hopefully not. I don't think- they usually play Crumble, not Vengeance, and they had a good opportunity to play Crumble the previous turn and didn't, but obviously they still could. Um, let's see. Next turn, we're gonna have 8 plus the 3. You're covered. I don't really know why I'm protecting that instead of Garen. Um, so what my plan is a Bannerman here. Raise the banner. Lift our and then I'll just we hold up a post. Because they only have two blockers. If they want to play another blocker, they have to just obliterate one of their the Undyings. So that's not too bad for us. We're representing 14 damage right now. My shield is yours. Break their spirits and their swords. All right, back to representing 14 damage again. But I got no kind of protection. There we go, GG's. Too many undyings. You just outraced them. That'll work. That was that was one that uh, you know I wasn't feeling so great about, but um, I guess the undyings just didn't kill us fast enough. They didn't have any removal or any interaction, and we were able to race. Garen helped out with that, and you know Garen and Screeching Dragon, and we were able to race them. So. Um, yeah, and obviously Bannerman put a bunch of power into play pretty quickly. That's the problem with, with the sentence can't block. That can be a problematic sentence. Um, so yeah, strong finish. Strong finish. So we didn't get, to, again, we didn't get to show off Nox Cryo Arena at all. Didn't really get to show off Unyielding Spirit. I played the one game where I went for Unyielding Spirit when I really didn't need to. And that one cost me the game whenever they had the Grass of the Undying on my Fiora. I was thinking that we were going to have to have Fiora, but we were able to do the 20 damage. You know, a lot of damage there that last turn. Um, you know, with an unblocked 7-7 seven, seven Garen. Um, yeah, this deck's pretty solid. It, it is. Uh, I think that... I don't think I piloted it as well as I have before. And we still ended up with a winning record. And I think that there was room to improve with my piloting. Um, so that's that's good news. You know, that means that there's definite upside in the deck. All right, but anyway, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. I always like seeing those. But thank you so much for watching some Unyielding Arena, and I'll see you for the next video.